Yeah. As I previously said, uh, we need to take advantage of all our colleagues who are here present. So we will move into the question and answers session. So everybody and everybody who, need, who, who has a need to ask any questions, request for any clarifications on any issue, may do so. Thank you. This, this question will come up. So the national ID. Oh, nobody was going to ask that this question. The national ID. When do we get ours? <laughs> Thank you very much for this question. The National Identification Authority has already planned to send officers here. Uh, in the first instance, they will train of the consular officers to act as uh, officers on their behalf. But before then, they will send in officers, and then those officers will be based here for a while. Some of them will go out to other provinces, after which the officers here will be trained, and then they will leave some equipment here for us to use for the enrollment. So as and when the time gets closer, we will put up notices on our websites for all everybody to see. So kindly keep checking on our website. Thank you very much. I'm here in the first place, I'm recommending the, the High Commissioner. Uh, in terms of the, our issuing of passport, it's very, very, very efficient. Uh, I applaud them for that. Because uh, I applaud them for that. Uh, compared to other Compared to other embassies, um, with colleagues from West Africa, DRC, our passport issuing is very much efficient, and I applaud you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Then my next question is, um, how do we, um, the professionals, for instance, I am a qualified civil engineer. I'm mean, into the industry here, working with other companies, but then, to my knowledge, also, I know that in our mission, we also have the, I mean, the, the bungalows or projects that they do, yeah, the innovation and so on. So, because of the industry that I am, I've also got some engineers who are pilots, bricklayers, and so on. But then I'm working for a South African company, but I would like to know from the council that uh, how do we also penetrate into our embassy? So that is my other question. Then my other question is, um, for the past for the past three years, before COVID, understand Ghana, we have something called Ghana Fest, Ghana Festival and so on. But after COVID, uh, those things are not longer happening. So I just want to, urge our embassy, the consulate, if they can revive that festival, I think it's going to help us. Why am I saying this? When we're doing that uh, Ghana Fest, there are a lot of uh, our Ghana businesses, I mean, they used to display them there, of which I believe that it is actually selling our country, as the, uh, the consulate has already indicated. It promotes our country. So if they can revive that Ghana Festival or whatever, was going on, I think it is also going to help us to, I mean, uh, I mean promote our country better. Then my last question is, um, the gathering is very fantastic, but uh, the information came out there very late. So I've been I'm in a certain group of Kenyans, so when I sent it to them, they were asking me, why are you informing us now and all those things. So I'm urging the the council that in the near future, if certain things is going to happen like it, take place, um, let the information come out there in time so that we can come out in our knowledge. Thank you very much. Working on it is something people try to avoid. And that is why we are here, we keep hearing the word cumbersome, cumbersome. But um, many times you apply for something and they say, oh, you go, we are working on it. You come back, you go, we are working on it. 
and then you wonder who is working on it and where they are working on it because it is not being worked on. So for example, I have the opportunity to go to Ghana for a week, just a week, and I need to apply for, uh, I need to get a birth certificate for my child. And it's just a week. So then we are also asking, because someone asks, what do we do? He said, go to Ghana. So I go to Ghana, and Ghana tells me, oh, it will take a while. Personally, in Ghana, it takes a very long time to get it, unless you want to pay for it. And it's very funny because it's not like we are foreigners and asking for a visa in Ghana. We are Ghanaians asking for Ghanaian documents, and we are not getting it. And so you would ask, and it's, it's a whole lot. And so you find somebody who is willing to help, and you think, oh, okay, this is the easiest way out. And that's where we get in these troubles. So right now, I think the question is, how can you help us that, oh, a Ghanaian in South Africa has arrived in Ghana. Who can I speak to that would help? Should I use the word fast track the process? Because ideally, we know that it's not that you are giving us a special treatment, but to a certain extent, yes. Because when we are here, we are representing you. And when we go back, we also need some kind of something that, oh, okay, my, I know that I have a commissioner somewhere who is doing things that when I go to Ghana, things are being done well. So how can you help us in that sense? Because it's kind of sad knowing that there's a lot happening. And when you say it, it's like, why are you saying it? Or stuff like that. I hope I'm making sense. But I, yeah, please, please help us out. Because we'll keep having meetings, and you keep telling us that it's working on it. And next year, we'll meet same time, same place. And we'll still be working on it. And yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is um, Kwame Bidiako. Um, it's Mavis here. Why I'm asking? Because uh, somebody spoke about um, the children um, not interacting that much because they feel they are Ghanaians, but um, they don't meet some of the Ghanaians. Because we had um, Ghana Fest which I think it was a very good activity and um, that we interact with each other. Um, musicians are invited, cultural groups are invited from Ghana to come and perform here so that at least um, our children will know that, look, we have a good culture, we have um, good musicians and stuff. So I'm, I'm praying that if Ghana Fest, uh, Ghana Fest should be back. Like uh, we have to organize Ghana Fest now because of post COVID and everything. So please, with the recreational activities, Ghana Fest is the best platform. We can do it in Pretoria, we can do it in Durban, we can do it in Impopo, wherever it should be, so that our our children will know that there is something or there are. Um, 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 there is activities that they can be recognized or um, see each other and know that they are going to feel Ghanaian. Thank you. I want to add to what I have just said regarding the birth certificate. I've been into this business for quite a very long time. The law here is very simple. It says if you are not permanent resident or you don't have a work permit, and you give birth to a child. Your child remain a foreigner. So there are two birth certificates. The one you're talking about, that is a written one, is white. It could be abridged or not abridged. The other one for permanent residents or those who are citizens born to South African parents, it is normally good, or let me put it that way, that the moment you are born, giving birth, you get an ID number. That 30 number stays with you from birth until death. Those who are here without residence permit, we the Kenyans, and we met here before, that was 2017, when this Miss Ayoko uh, was here. This same place, it came up again. Now, maybe this is what you have to work it out for us. When our communities give birth to children at various hospitals, 
they are not recorded. Because, one, they don't have valid asylum papers, which to me is illegal anyway. Let me put it blank. Anyone with an asylum paper in Ghana from Ghana, asylum is a bad It's not legal. I know about that. But we don't talk too much about the Ghanaians who hate us. And I'm sure they're going to hate me for that. So the ladies are not getting the white written birth certificates. The law says that anyone giving birth at any hospital, any facility in South Africa, must be recorded. They need to be in the publishing register. But we aren't getting that benefit. That's why I think if the Ghana High Commission will help, it would be very good for all of us. So most of the time, you get birth certificates that is not recorded anywhere, any place. I am a travel agent. I'm giving this one for a very long time, so I know what is happening. I don't want to talk too much about it. Maybe we can talk about it behind us. So that's the information I give you. Thank you. I came in during stage four, not uh, light out, but stage four lockdown. Nothing was happening. A complete shutdown. So for close to about a year, nothing happened. Then one, uh, one, 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 one day, one afternoon, a friend of mine uh, who is a minister from Ghana came to visit and invited me to lunch. So I went there to meet So I was introduced to this lady as the convener or a founder of the Ghana. Because that was the very first time that I met this lady. So after that meeting, I came back. Then I asked for, because at the ministry, at the missions, we always, you know, have files, you know, on, you know, programs. So I asked for the file for the Ghana first. Oh, okay. Then I saw some of the things that they've been doing. So then what I did was I picked the phone and then I spoke to Ambassador Isibwati. You should know him, our former ambassador. I said, oh, Ambassador, hey, there's this program, Ghana Fest. So he even said that, oh, yes, uh, Ghana Fest is a very good program that's worthy of being supported. Just that there were some few challenges. So for him, if we would want to be part of this program, we should make sure that we iron out those few little, little challenges, and then we can have a very, very mammoth, you know, program. So recently, about uh, two weeks ago, this beautiful lady that I spoke about came over to see me. Uh, she came with uh, her lieutenants. Yeah, so we sat down, uh, we had a frank conversation, and then we told her, that they should give me some time. We asked her to give me some, some time. Uh, we are trying to put one or two uh, things together. We are going to get back to her very, very soon. And then we see how the little, little things that, that my predecessor told me about. You know, we just clear them and then we can have a very good program, you know, that will bring all of us together, you know, let us have fun and then carry high the image of Ghana in this country. So rest assured, uh, we are not against Ghana Fest. We are totally for Ghana Fest. But then we just want to sort out little, little things. Once we are through with that, we're going to have one grand Ghana Fest. Trust me. Time to time, quarterly, we will organize training programs for them to know what is ensued in Ghana? For instance, we now have the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, which is AFTA, which is given a number of privileges to Ghanaians who want to either export or import within the sub region. So, for instance, if you are here and you want to uh, export your, pro uh, your products to Ghana, because South Africa has signed as a member of the Continental Free Trade Area. And then Ghana has also signed to the Continental Free Trade Area. You can send your product to Ghana with a subsidized quota on your the tariffs. When I say tariffs, I mean duties. Also, from time to time, we organize program about your yeah, export facilitation. How do I even package my program, my products to even send it to Ghana? Apart from that, 
Ghana government has facilitated a program called the One District, One Factory. If you want to go and establish a, pro, a, a company in Ghana, if you have the equipment, we, you just bring a letter called Letter of Intent, your intention to establish a business in Ghana. We will facilitate to the relevant authorities. So before you get to Ghana, they know about you. You send a proposal, Letting, us, letting them know that this is the project I want to do, this is the financials, this is the marketability. We send it there and then we facilitate to make sure that before you get there, under the 1D1, the government has solicited, facilitated lands. You are not going for you know, litigation land. There's a litigation free land that you can just go and then once you get in touch with the 1D1F secretariat, they will lead you there. There is also, we have the uh, Ghana Exim Bank. That also support SMEs who want to, you know, establish in Ghana. But you need to pass through the process. So there are a number of activities that if I say I'm applying and I mean we've not finished this. So all that we want is please, all the businesses, if you can, yes, if you register with us, we will organ even if you want it weekly, the institutions are ready to support you. But let's have your details. Nobody is going to give your information to any South officials or police or, they, you know, you're not going to do that. When H.G. was speaking, he mentioned about the welfare. The purpose of your details is for your own welfare to know the investment opportunities available in Ghana. As we speak now, it is only the foreign direct investors who are enjoying those facilities because they are bold enough to go. Our Ghanaians are afraid. They think that when they give their information, we're going to expose them never. It's for our own welfare. So please, all the professionals, what I would advise you is that come together. You can form associations. Instead of an individual going to say, I'm going to establish a business, you may not be able to meet the capital requirement. And even you, as you are a Ghanaian, you're not going to pay much. All you need is contact us with the letter of intent, your intention, what you want to do, get a proposal, get a business plan, let us know your capital requirement. You can put your capital together go down, they will give you a litigation free land, start the process. You can either be within, um, register under the 1D1F, where when you ship your equipment, you're going to get a uh, tariff free on it. You can also decide to go under the free zone enclave, where you can also establish there, and then you have tax free holiday of 10 years. So there are a number of privileges. All that we need is your information from time to time so that we can uh, update you on the you know, opportunities available in Ghana. Thank you. It's actually in the person of uh, Mrs. Patricia Bano. Yeah, and uh, if you, anytime you come in on issues to do with trade, she's the person you see. That's her specialization. You know, she'll be, she's the best person to help and assist you in all of these issues to do with trade. So I think uh, you've met her, you've seen her now. So anytime you come in on any such issues, she will always be ready to assist. Then uh, with the issue of Paul. Uh, okay, I will speak about the police clearance form. Uh, unfortunately, the mission does not have access to police records. So we are constrained from you know how we can help in this instance we are trying to get the police to to have a formal relationship with all our missions so that we will send your request and your data and the charges to them however the police have not given us any feedback on such issues i'm aware we started working on this some few years ago before i came to this mission so we are waiting for feedback on that issue any moment from now. I want to comment on uh, the statement by the previous questioner about uh, how applying for things at the uh, High Commission uh, appears to be a bit cumbersome. Yeah, I, I would like to tell you that I strongly disagree. We have made everything possible to ensure that everybody has equal access to the system. Everything is online, including payments. 
The problem we have is that a lot of Ghanaians are extremely unwilling to fill out any forms or to make any approaches to the High Commission or to do such things for themselves. Invariably, they will go and see some other person to do it on their behalf. And those people will always take some money from them and make it cumbersome. We do not even take cash here. You pay with a card or you pay online. The charges we charge are the charges approved by Parliament and authorized by the Ministry. They are all clearly and categorically stated on our website. So on the uh, matter involving the, the, the brutal uh, killing of our compatriots, so uh, we got to hear, we, like, we, we got to know about this uh, matter. The, the exact moment it happened, it was him, the head of the team at the consular section. He came to inform me that this is what has happened. So immediately we constituted the team, we sat down and said, so what do we do? Luckily for us, we also got uh, one Mr. Safo, I don't know, goes in the Korean community. You should know him. He's somebody who's been here for so many years. That same day, he also came to the office, you know, to see me about this matter. Immediately, I dispatched him to go there and find out what really happened. He did that. He came, he filed a report. You know, that's how the system works. You file a report a report to Accra because you have to inform His Excellency the President. Say, President, would this year back on say na atono? That's how we do it. So we file the report, and this report will go through the foreign ministry because the missions, the embassies, and the high commissions are under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So we file this to Accra. Accra got back to us immediately and asked us to follow this matter up. So he's been following the matter up. But then you know how the system works here. So now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is handling this. The Minister for Foreign Affairs will be coming here at the end of the first quarter. So the first quarter will end in, is it April? Oh, sorry, in March, at the end of this March, first quarter, the, the, the Foreign Minister will be coming here. And this is going to be one of the things that uh, uh, she would want to engage uh, her sister on, you know, diplomatically. Some of these things, also, unti mean kujina public and then say them and all that. But diplomat using diplomatic channels, she's going to impress upon her to help, you know, with the uh, whoever, you know, the assailants, whoever caused this mayhem. So not that we are not doing anything ab about it. You know, we've been there several, especially him. He's been there several. The last time when you came to my office and then you wanted a feedback, immediately I called him. And he said, oh, sir, in the Kranank, I was going to give you a, a feedback. But then the people are saying that there are no witnesses. They only saw a black uh, uh, Audi. You know, that, that, that's the thing. And the panel say, you, you can't force him to say, well, who? But are, are you getting it? He's saying that we didn't see. So as of now, nobody has come out to tell us that we saw this car, we saw Asimisi doing it. Nobody has done it. And you know, police, they thrive on evidence. Because without that, when you go to court, you will lose your case. The lawyer here, or oh, a lawyer, no way. A lawyer, no way. Uh -huh. Yeah, the lawyer will tell you, if you don't have hardcore evidence, and you go to court, you lose your case. But then, you say, diplomatically, you know, once we put pressure, things can happen. Yeah, things can happen. So please... Uh, he will not leave us in vain. Our brother will not die in vain. Uh, we seek justice. So we've escalated this matter. So let's hope for uh, good news to, to come to us. Thank you.